like for you just to explain to all of us again uh, what our strategy towards Syria is today in detail, if you would. I'd be delighted to explain what it is, but I also wanted to explain what it's not, uh, because I've heard uh, people suggest many things uh, that somehow there's, you know, I mean, you just said the word inattention to it has led it to be where it is today and so forth. I just don't agree with that, Senator. I really don't agree with that. Uh, the fact is we have paid enormous attention to it. By absolute consensus in the United States Congress last year, <clears throat> I don't think there was a member here who suggested there was a military, maybe one or two, who suggested there was a military solution to Syria. No, but we did suggest arming, training. Um, well, Senator, I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, we're doing a lot of things, and, and uh, we are deeply engaged with the opposition. We are more engaged than we've ever been before, right now, and more successfully right now. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Senate. Well, would you be, glad, would you be willing to tell us about that? Uh, not in an open session. Well, would you commit right now to tell us every detail of our I'm, Syrian I'm strategy in a classified no session? I've always felt, as, as the chairman knows, yeah. in my years as chairman of this committee, I thought one of the great anomalies of the United States Senate was that the Foreign Relations Committee, which has to authorize and create foreign policy, uh, isn't part of the chain that is access. So, so you won't commit to sharing. You're up here asking. No, I will. I will, okay. Senator. You'll commit to sharing yeah. every detail of what our to strategy the is. I am allowed to under the process and the law. I will do that. But I, if there are any limitations that I'm aware of, I'm not sure. But we always have these briefings down, down in the civets, and I'm happy to go through it with you. But let me explain what I can here in open session. Okay. But I want the American, I want people to understand what we're doing. I came into uh, this role in February, February 1st of last year. Uh, we immediately had a meeting with the foreign ministers of the so-called London 11 support group. We met in Rome, we met in Amman, and we began to coordinate our efforts with the opposition. Then in April, I think it was April, I went to uh, Russia, met with President Putin, met with Foreign Minister Lavrov, and made the argument that we needed together to try to work towards a political solution. At that point in time, President Assad was not faring uh, so well. Uh, and there was a great sense of insecurity in Syria. The Russians agreed that we needed to try to negotiate this. Subsequently, after agreeing to the concept of the Geneva II meeting where you would try to have a negotiation, the opposition began to have its own infighting. Nothing we could control, just the nature of the beast. And while they began to have their infighting, large numbers of jihadists began to be attracted to the effort to get rid of Assad because he was killing Sunni. And many of them are uh, Sunni based. All of which everyone said was going to happen on the front end. Yeah, Very well, predicted. Well, yeah, what was yeah. the plan to not have that happen, Senator? I didn't notice Congress racing to the barriers saying, we're going to. We know we're going to do something. I don't think the American people were going to send American troops. Well, let me ask you this. Do you agree with the president's comments on CBS just recently that the, authoriz the authorization for force that you asked for, that had we done that, it would have had no effect in Syria? Do you agree with those comments? I believe that it would have had no effect after I, you came in and told us the effect that it was going to have? Not what the president said, but the president said it would not have had the effect of changing the calculation or the course of the war, it would have had an effect on precisely what he was asking for it for, which was to send a message to Assad about the use of chemical so the, weapons. So the authorization you asked for wasn't to degrade his capabilities? Of using chemical weapons, correct. If you uh, go back and read it, it was precisely well, targeted to reduce let me ask his you this. capacity to use yeah. chemical weapons. But let me just finish the thought here. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Everybody up here was saying, we don't want to go to war, maybe... Not, no, not everybody. This committee voted to go to war. No, they didn't vote to go to war. They voted to have a limited strike for the sole purpose of degrading his capacity to deliver chemical weapons. And, and Guess uh, what, what? Did you not share with us that that degrading would have a definite effect on his ability to carry out against the opposition. You didn't tell us that? I think it would have had some effect on that, Senator, but it would not have had a devastating impact by which he had to recalculate because it wasn't going to last that long. We all know that. It took 30,000 sorties and 30 days in Bosnia to have an impact. Yeah. Here we were going to have one or two days to degrade and send a message. And guess what? 
Senator, we came up with a better solution to get all of them out by yeah. working through the diplomatic channel with Russia. And we have an agreement which is now working out with 54 percent removed and we're moving to more. So which, what's your take? Would you rather drop a few bombs, send a message, and then have him still with the weapons and capacity to deliver them? Or would you rather get all of them out? Let me ask you this.